Hello folks, how are you? This is Mohit. Uh, today I will be taking your webinar session. Okay, uh, first let me introduce introduce myself. Uh, I'm a PHP developer. Basically, uh, I'm uh, I'm into web development from last 11 years, and uh, I've worked with a lot of MNCs, and uh, now I'm uh, associate Jureka for uh, this sessions, online sessions. And uh, I've worked with uh, various domains and uh, also worked in various countries. And moreover, uh, apart from web development, I'm into client-side development as well. So today, uh, I'll be taking a session of PHP and MySQL where I will be letting you people know that how PHP and MySQL dominates the web development market and how easy it is and how uh, you can familiar with PHP. So the topic for our session would be PHP and MySQL server-side scripting for web development. So first of all, you people need to understand what server-side means. Basically, two kind of development is there. Uh, basically, when we talk about web, basically we do server-side programming and client-side programming. So server-side means where a web server is involved, a server is a system that interprets our instructions and that returns the result as per our instructions. So that is called a server and uh, here in PHP when we talk about a server, Apache server is the most preferred server that is used with PHP and if you talk about database then MySQL is a database that best suits the PHP development. So what a database is, what, what PHP is for and what is Apache that we will be discussing today, uh, today's, uh, in today's session that how we can use PHP, MySQL and Apache to develop a portal or web application that can solve or automate your problem or you can say your business and a lot of stuff. Hi Sujan. So let's start with the introduction then we will see further that how PHP and MySQL can be used for a web application. So today our objectives would be first of all we'll see the basics of PHP that what is PHP, why it is called server-side programming and how it is different from or you can say how it is having advantage over other server-side programming languages. Then we'll see a bit of conditional logic and loops. Basically uh, in your real life you can see that uh, sometimes you get conditions, you get uh, you are uh, stuck in some conditions that if this will happen then I will do it otherwise I will do some other stuff. So that kind of th uh, stuff that we get in real life is called condition. So the same way those kind of real life conditions can be implemented in PHP as well because PHP is a server-side programming language. Okay Sujan you know PHP but you don't know Okay, you don't know PHP, but you know MySQL. Okay, no issues. Today I will give you a introduction to PHP that how PHP can be can do interaction with MySQL to build web applications. PHP is basically a programming language. If you are aware of C, C++, basically C, C++ are on desktop side, but PHP is on is can uh, PHP can be used on web web development. That is that. That's why it is called web development. Web means where we can store our data and that can be seen or we can have interaction with that data from multiple locations. So whatever we can put on web and interact from multiple places, that is called web development. So Sai Kiran, so you want to, okay, just a second. Yes, yeah, Saikiran, tell me what you want to say. Suzanne, today I will explain you a concept of PHP and interaction of PHP with MySQL. That how we can basics some of the basics I will discuss. That means I'll be discussing some of the basics of PHP, how PHP came into the market and how it became a popular web development language. Then we'll see a bit of conditional logics and loops. Loop means uh, sometimes we want some, some information to be repeated. Like if we want to 
uh, counts from 1 to 10. So we will be increasing counter by 1 and we can count. That way that is a that that is called repeating of a particular thing or repetition of a particular logic. So that particular thing is called loop. Then we will see PHP form handling. Form you might be aware of forms. Basically when you go to some bank or some other organization or some uh, some uh, company or financial organization, any kind of uh, organization, organization when you visit, they provide you a form to fill up. Even in the supermarket, sometimes they do their marketing and provide you some forms to fill up, where you need to provide your first name, last name, email address, uh, personal information, some kind of business information they can ask for. If you go to a bank, you have to open up an account, you have to provide a lot of information like your uh, residential details, your personal details and uh, uh, some proofs they may, may ask and uh, they may ask that attach the proofs with it uh, with this particular form and also provide the information for those proofs. So all this kind of information you need to fill on a form. So that kind of forms can also be designed in PHP into web development. Uh, for example, if you are, uh, I think you might be aware of using email accounts. So email accounts when you have to create an email account, you get a form where you fill up your details, your first name, last name, your expected or desired uh, email address, your password and a lot of more information. So that kind of information we fill up is called a form. So form, uh, when, when PHP was not there in the market, only HTML was there, then we can have static websites with HTML. We can't build dynamic websites but as PHP came into the market it became a dynamic thing because a, a dynamic web development language why it is called because here you can interact with the system whatever information you will provide you can save it you can update it or you can see it whenever you need so that's why it is called a web development language dynamic web development language uh, Sovic, no, uh, if you are aware of C and C++, it is good, but if you are not, even then you can start with PHP, because starting P, uh, means basics of PHP are very simple and easy to understand. So I don't think uh, you will get any issue while learning PHP. If you are aware of C, C++, C++ or Java, that is really good, that will help you out. The same thing, when the same thing can be done with the uh, .NET, then what is the difference why we should use PHP? Okay, the PHP, first of all, we will see in further slides uh, some of the characteristics of PHP. First thing is that it is platform independent. You can develop on any platform. Second, it is it, it is easy to learn. Third, it, it is an open source. You don't have to pay any license, buy any license, or you don't have to pay anything to get PHP work on your system. And moreover, servers where you host your, your websites, you will get for very cheap if you are going with PHP only. Because most of the servers are having PHP installed on their servers by default. For learning PHP, do we need to learn JavaScript? No, JavaScript is not mandatory to learn PHP. JavaScript is on client side. Now, the difference between client side and server side is that Client side means that interacts with the browser only. That is browser dependent. So JavaScript is always browser dependent because it runs on the browser itself. It doesn't need any server to interact with. So client side technology always interacts with the browser, but and that is dependent on the browser because uh, you might have noticed something sometimes that whenever you write a code in JavaScript and you run it on Mozilla or you run, not, run it on IE, Internet Explorer, both give the different result because it is dependent on the browser's capability. But a server-side programming is that, that is not dependent on the browser. You have a web server, that particular server-side programming like PHP interacts with the web server and returns us the result. And that web server is on your server that can be on your local system or it can be some shared system or it can be some cloud. So it depends upon your requirement, your features. So PHP 
a web development like language like PHP is dependent on any browser. So JavaScript is not necessary to learn PHP. Once you learn PHP, it would be easy for you to learn JavaScript. Yeah, Mangesh, uh, there's a question from Mangesh is that, can we take the questions and answers at the end of the session, please? Raj, uh, your question is, question core PHP is good or using framework is good? See, core PHP is good for basic programming. When the question comes for readability or usability, or you can say security, then always we prefer frameworks. Because frameworks are nothing but they are design patterns that use core PHP. That means you can say we design a particular structure and as per the structure we work. So framework is always better. But if you talk about speed, then definitely when you are using a framework, speed would be a bit de degraded, but that you won't be able to feel because if you are having a good server, good configuration, you won't find any difference while using core PHP or a framework. So framework is better for reusability. If you want to reuse some code, you can use it using framework. And the way your question is, is PHP easy to learn? Yes, it is very easy to learn. Raj, your question is, which framework is best for performance? See, a lot of frameworks are there in market. If you talk about good frameworks, then there are there is YII, there is Symfony, there is Zen framework, then you can say Laravel, uh, Code Igniter, so a lot of frameworks are there. Uh, is it better, I think, if we first go through the session, then we can discuss on the questions. Because if people are not aware of PHP, how they will get the knowledge of frameworks? So let's first go with the session. Then we will see into what is a framework and how we use it. Because you all might not be aware of PHP. Some of you might be aware of PHP basics, but, but some are not. So it's better first let's go through the slides. Then we will discuss on your advanced questions. So here are objectives. After form handling, we will be looking into functions. So function is a construct that is used for re reusability of code. That is a most basic concept of PHP or most basic block of PHP that we can use for reusability. Dhruv, uh, PHP is a server-side language and HTML5 is on client side, so it is not mandatory to learn HTML5 to learn PHP. If you, you have knowledge of HTML, basic HTML, HTML4, even that is fine. HTML5 you can use for your if you need some advanced advanced concepts of HTML5, then you can go ahead with it. Otherwise, basic knowledge of PHP, uh, basic knowledge of HTML4 is enough to design forms. Because forms will be designing into HTML and those forms will be handled into PHP. Next, object, bit of object-oriented concepts we'll discuss. So object-oriented, what object is and how we build object-oriented concept that we'll be discussing today. Then I will let you know how MySQL can interact with PHP. We can have MySQL server, we can write down queries over there and we can execute them. But how ex queries can be written into PHP and can be executed, that we'll be discussing today. So here is a bit of overview of PHP and MySQL. PHP, MySQL both are open source. You can get it for free. So here is the uh, answer of one of the questions that why we should prefer PHP over .NET? Because .NET, you have to buy licenses, you have to pay for it. But for PHP, you don't have to pay anything. It is open source. You can get it free of cost, and you don't have to buy any license to install it or to work on it. And PHP and MySQL are two key components in open source LAMP stack. So MySQL is a database where you can save your information, and PHP is a medium that let you people make to save your data into MySQL database. It is the most appropriate tool for developing dynamic web pages. For example, we can develop informative forums, chatting platforms, e-commerce shopping. So you might be aware of a lot of uh, e-commerce platforms like Flipkart, Snapdeal, and a uh, lot more. So what they do, they basically save their information into databases. And from databases, this information is fast. 
based on their information saved and that is displayed on the browser and from that information you just book your order or whatever you can do from a shopping cart. You can buy your products and a lot of things you can do. PHP with MySQL is a powerful combination showing the real power of server-side scripting. So there are a lot of server-side programming languages but why PHP is dominated because PHP is best suited with a best database that is on the web is MySQL. MySQL can store a lot of, lot of information. You, if you are using only file to save your information, how much, uh, so if you save your information to file only, the file will be very huge and it would be difficult for you to locate a particular information. For that case, we use databases and MySQL is a database that can save huge amount of data. A single table in MySQL can save up to 16 terabytes. So it is huge data that a MySQL database can handle. If you save a lot of information into a file and when you try to open up that file, that file, will be, your system will be hanged. Reshma, what is, you are asking what about Hadoop. Hadoop we are not covering in this session. So I won't uh, take that thing into session because I don't want to spend time on other things. Let's first start PHP. Paritosh, you are asking can we create application for mobile in PHP? Definitely you can use PHP for web services, for building web services. And web services can be embedded with any technology. So front end would be in HTML5 and back end would be PHP. That you can do for developing web applications or mobile applications. PHP is a server side programming. So whatever you will process on your client side and based on that data, PHP will process that data and that will return it to mobile application. So building web services using PHP, you can enter Android or, or mobile. So PHP has a wide range of MySQL functions available with the help of separate module. So lot of databases are there like MySQL, SQL, Oracle, uh, PostgreSQL and uh, SQLite. But why MySQL is supported? Why MySQL is preferred with PHP? Because PHP provides some internal APIs or internal functions that can be directly used into PHP programming and we can build our web applications with them. So here are some of the benefits of using PHP in MySQL. First of all, it is free of cost. It is capable of building large applications, small applications. So basically it, it can handle any size of application. It is platform independent whether you are developing PHP into Linux framework or Linux platform or Windows platform, it doesn't matter. It supports all major web servers. So we can develop PHP on IIS or Apache or many other servers, but why we use Apache? Because it is the best suited web server with PHP and it supports all major databases. We prefer MySQL, but you can use Oracle as well. So open database connectivity, ODBC connectivity is there. That can be used to connect any database with PHP. So the wish, if you are having knowledge of C, C++, that is very good for you. You will find PHP very easy then. Through uh, difference between Linux and Windows. So Windows is a different platform, Linux is a different platform. So that cannot be discussed in this particular class as this is regarding PHP, not regarding PHP and Windows. And moreover, the second big characteristic of PHP is that it is secure. So faster development you can do with PHP, you simply write your code and refresh your browser and your data will be displayed there. That I will show you practically, don't worry. Everything what I'm discussing today. So let me give some time so that I can show you people up everything practically. I will not take only conceptual thing. I will take the practical stuff so, so that you are aware of it and uh, you get comfortable with PHP. And large communities, whatever you can, you want to know about PHP, you simply write on Google and you will get a lot of information. So a lot of communities work for PHP. You don't have to worry about whether I will find some particular thing regarding PHP or not. You will get everything. 
Reshma will be discussing on website launching, how we create a website. That we will be discussing today. Don't worry. And then it is easy to learn, easy to implement and everything. And it is very proven and trusted. So whatever you write in PHP, whatever you execute using PHP, that is reliable. Every time you will get the same result. It is not the case that once you will get a different result and next time you will not get the result. It is not the case. It is very stable language. So Dhruv, if you compare PHP to HTML, we cannot compare basically because HTML is on, HTML is a scripting, uh, sorry, it's a hypertext language that is on client only. It doesn't interact with the server, but PHP interacts with the server like C and C++, but it is on the web. This is the advantage of PHP. So here are some of internal characteristics of PHP. So first is it is dynamic and weak typing. So what do we mean by weak typing? Basically in C or C++, uh, let me start with some practical stuff. I think that would be better for you people to understand. So first of all, you have to install PHP on your system. The first thing is to install PHP. So here are Two basic, basically two ways to install PHP onto your system. One is that because three things are necessary to do any kind of PHP development. No CSS is no, not necessary to develop PHP. That is additional benefit if you know CHP, uh, C plus, uh, CSS, but it is not mandatory. So I will go to some next slides and then I will come back to these slides. So here are some of the things that are mandatory to do PHP development. If you are going to develop HTML sites, static websites, then you don't need any web server or database. But if you are going to work with PHP, you need three basic things to be installed on your system. Reshma, how do you, your question is how do would you expand PHP? We will be taking it in this session, don't worry. First, let me complete the slides, then most of your questions will be solved. Don't worry, I will be taking everything practically, not the conceptual thing only. So, for these are the three mandatory things that are required to do any kind of PHP development. First is web server. So, server is a system that interprets your request or you can say that answers to your questions, answer to your queries that you do with your PHP language. So Himika, you are not able to see my slide. I think uh, everything, everybody is able to see my slide. Uh, Himika, I think you should look into that. Yes, I'm on slide number nine, right? Everybody is able to see me. I think you should try out to reconnect or just look into your system that why it is not displayed. It might be mini biased or like that. Okay. So web server is a system that understands your request and replies to that particular request. It send respond to your request. It responds to your request. A database is a you can structure that can save your data permanently that you can use for further use. And PHP parser, so parser would be associated with Apache. So that parser would be interpreting whatever you do and that will be replying, that will understand the request. Basically parser is required to understand your request. Yes, Mitesh, PHP supports Oracle database. PHP can interact with lot of databases. The thing is that some of the databases you PHP doesn't provide internal APIs for that you can use open database connectivity ODBC. So whenever you search in PHP ODBC connection, you will get that information that how you can connect Oracle database with PHP. So let's start with some basic PHP. So first of all, I am telling you that these are the three things that you need to install into PHP. One is Apache server, then PHP, and then MySQL server. So first you will install Apache server. 
then you will install PHP, then you will install MySQL. Yes, yes, Neil. Websites like Amazon, Google, Yahoo, everyone uses PHP. Yes, Pinder. So let's start with how we install PHP, MySQL, and Apache on our system. So you can download Apache, PHP, and MySQL from their respective websites. Just write on Google, download PHP, download Apache, and download MySQL. You will get their setups and you can install on your system. So first you will install Apache, then PHP, and then MySQL. In this serial you will need to install. Or what you can do, there is a there is a package called XAMPP, X-A-M-P-P. So this contains Apache, A-M-P-P here means, X means extended, a means Apache, M means MySQL, P means PHP, and the, then again P means Perl. So on this particular setup, you can work with both PHP and Perl. But today we'll be looking into PHP only. So with the PHP version that we are going to learn in this course would be PHP 5, latest version of PHP. So PHP 4 is uh, almost out of the market. So we won't be discussing about that. We'll be discussing about concepts of PHP 5 only. So this is the package called XAMPP. So whenever you write on Google, Z download XAMPP, you will get a website called apachefriends.org. So on that apachefriends.org, you will find XAMPP installation for Linux servers for Windows servers. So you need to install, if you are using Windows, you can use XAMPP for Windows, you can get the setup from there, download the setup from there, and you will install. And as you will install it, so installation will create a folder called XAMPP. So this is my XAMPP folder. So installation you can do in, in whichever drive you, you, you are willing to do. You can use C drive or D drive or E drive. Whatever drive you need to install, you can simply give the path while installation, and you can install XAMPP. So once you install XAMPP, here you will get Apache, folder for Apache, folder for MySQL, folder for PHP, and folder for Perl. So everything in this package is, is installed automatically. You simply need to install XAMPP package. Otherwise, if you want to install individual things, then you have to install Apache individually, then PHP individually, then MySQL individually. And only then you will be able to use. But if you are going to do your local development, you can just go with XAMPP package and that will install PHP, MySQL and Apache on your system. So when you, once you install XAMPP, you will get this kind of control panel. So this control panel is having buttons to start Apache server and MySQL server. So Dhruv, which server is popular, Linux or Windows? Basically, PHP is better to work with Linux, but you can also work on Windows. There is not an issue. See, I have told you that PHP is platform independent. It can work on any platform. Yes, 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 Arthi, you can uh, you can record. And moreover, this session is being recorded on my side as well. And this is also this also will be recorded on Azureka side. Yeah, Dhruv, Linux is more secure and it is more sophisticated to be used. So let's discuss PHP first, then we'll be taking other queries. So here you can see Apache and MySQL. So let's stop them first. I will, when you will install XAMPP for the first time, you will get this control panel. So Apache is a server, MySQL is also a server. Apache is a web server and MySQL is a database server. So in order to use a server, you need to start it. Start the server. Only then, server would be able to interact with your parser, that is PHP. Ashish, Tomcat, yes, Tomcat we can also use with PHP, but we are not going to discuss Tomcat or Mercury in this session. Shikha, see, when you register with the Azureka, you get this kind of login you will get your credentials and you can log into that and here you will get the link for your course.
and if you need recording you can talk to Azureka regarding that they will provide you the recording see here you will get all the contents of your PHP so once you get registered with Azureka you get a login and you are able to get your see your course over there each and every ch chapter you will be able to see and moreover with each, each chapter you will find the recording here you can see class 1 recording so once you get registered every class will be recorded after that and you can listen to a particular recording simply by logging into your account Kamlesh exam is basically for local systems Mo when you install your uh, when you do projects on the web servers that is already installed over there you don't have to install on a web server when you are going to host a website on sub server that server will uh, already have be having PHP and MySQL you don't have to install it and you can develop high-end projects with PHP that is not an issue so once we have installed XAMPP server you will get Apache and MySQL. You are welcome, Kamlesh. Apache and MySQL. So you need to start both servers. So first I will start Apache server. So remember one thing, Apache runs on two ports on your system. One is port number 80 and one is for port number 443. Whenever you go to some secure website, secure like if you go to some bank's website or some shopping cart website, instead of HTTP you will find HTTP, HTTPS then you will find SDFC.com like that so secure me that data is encrypted that is advanced concept so I will not be discussing it today so port two ports are there basically that are used by Apache server one is 80 and one is 8443 when we work with HTTP we port 80 is utilized and when we work with HTTPS port 443 is utilized and next we will start MySQL server and when both the, both the server will be started you will get green background for these modules Apache and MySQL so MySQL by default uses number 3306 so now my MySQL and PHP has been started now in order to start a project from scratch in PHP using XAMPP when you install XAMPP I have installed XAMPP on my D drive here you can see XAMPP folder inside XAMPP folder I will be having a folder called STT, stdocs inside that stdocs I will be creating my own folder that I want to access that would be creating my project files so I will be creating a folder I have created a folder called webinar underscore azureka inside that folder I will create my file and that files extension would be PHP so this files extension is index.php so see it is PHP file dot PHP type of file it is dot PHP file So PID you don't need to worry about PID what PID means this is personal ID that is provided uh, by the system that is for internal use you don't have to worry about PID so here I created a file called index.php so every PHP file would be having an extension dot PHP otherwise it will not accept or it will not run PHP Shikha, that uh, you need to confirm with Azureka that uh, course how how they provide I think it would be with, with frameworks I think it would be so MVC is nothing but it's a design pattern it's a structure that we follow to develop our website if you are aware of PHP you can easily work with any framework any MVC framework so I have created a file index.php I have created a folder in XAMPP htdocs webinar underscore azure and in this folder I'll be keeping my file and my file name is net.php
Okay, Shikha, uh, on www.azureka.co, you need, when you will register with Azureka, you will get your login credentials. You will get a link for login, you will login, and once you log in, you will be able to see your courses, my courses, and in that course, this PHP MySQL with my Messi framework would be there. And then there would be basic recording, presentation, assignment, and a lot of things for that particular course. Okay? So here I have what I have done, I have created a file index.php. Now on my system, once my MySQL server and Apache server started, I will write HTTP. This is for local system only if we are going to use XAMPP server. Local host. So once you write local host, you get a screen like this. So if you get the screen, this simply means that your PHP is installed successfully. Now, how you will access your folder that I created in HTDocs. So for that you don't have to provide the complete complete path. After localhost you will simply write your folder name and file name. That's it. Now you're able to run your file. Now I haven't written anything in this file. That's why you're, you're seeing the blank page. Now let's try to understand how PHP works. So PHP basically starts with the tag and ends with a closing tag. So PHP starts with less than question mark PHP. So this is the opening tag of PHP and question mark greater than. This is the closing tag of PHP. So whatever you write, you want to execute using PHP, you will be creating a .php file and inside that file you will be creating opening PHP tag and closing PHP tag and inside that whatever you will write I'm writing print this is my first PHP file and now you don't have to do much you simply have to go to your web server and simply refresh it so here is the result when you refresh it prints the result it prints the line that particular statement yes upender you need to type in url http local host and then slash then your folder project folder and then file name that's it. See, Rithik, uh, we, in PHP we don't only print, we can do a lot of stuff that, that you will see further that we cannot do with HTML. So let's go further and then we will discuss. So here are some of the characteristics that we missed and I will be discussing now dynamic and web type uh, web typing so dynamic you have seen that whatever I change and moreover I, I can interact with da databases that is the best dynamicity with PHP but it is dynamic it can respond to your request yeah Bashan you can Ajay Kumar uh, you can open with URL uh, sorry port number as well no issues so this is my first PHP file. This is my first uh, line that I printed in PHP. Now, if we want to create a variable in PHP, so variable is a thing that stores a particular value and that can be changed as per our requirement. That's why it is called variable. So in PHP, in C, C++, like, unlike C and C++, in PHP, the variable is created with a dollar sign first. Dollar, like where? or I would write my first where and it can be this line that I've written that I've printed then instead of printing simply line I will print my variable here dollar filter where yes should the PHP is case sensitive like C it is similar uh, so syntax is almost similar to C if you are aware of C. 
now see i have initially i was printing my uh, printing my string now what i am doing i am writing the string in a variable i am storing this string in a variable now this variable would be stored in the tree and now instead of writing the string i am printing this variable here i will change a bit yes the various data types are similar to C and plus, uh, C++. Plus plus. They are data types in PHP, like array, string, number, float, decimal. Everything is there in PHP as there are in C or C++. Plus plus. Yes, Nil. Basically, you don't have to. That I'm going to discuss further. Let me let me complete this. So I have. Himika, there is no direct pointer concept in PHP. We, there is, but we don't use it. Yes, so we, uh, in order to define a variable in PHP, you cannot remove this dollar sign. It would be there. It is mandatory to have a dollar sign before a variable name. Okay, Shruti, we will take the brief uh, at the last, no issues. So I have created a variable and saved my string into this variable and I'm printing it. So when I refresh my browser, so this is my first PHP file using variable. It got printed. So I created a variable, assigned a value to that variable and I have printed it. So you are able to see it on the browser. So this is the simplicity of PHP. You simply write your statements and execute it. You don't have to compile to any other stuff. So you can see dynamic and weak typing. So here you can see while assigning a variable, while creating a variable, while assigning a string to a variable, I didn't give any data type for this particular variable. Shweta, yes, uh, code lobster is a ID for PHP. You can use it in Notepad even. There is not a restriction. Anywhere you can write PHP code, where you are comfortable. Just just search for PHP IDs and you will find a lot of options. So this is how I can print PHP. So I don't have to provide any type. See, here I have given a string. If I assign a number to it, it will be taken. I don't have to define any data type. So it will print 10 now. It will override the previous value and it will print 10. So no data type is required to define in PHP. It is for gaming language. That's why it is called weak typing, dynamic and weak typing. Variable variables. So we can have variable variables. A variable can further be a variable stored in a variable. Dynamic arrays. So arrays can be dynamic. Dynamic constant, dynamic functions. We can create functions and reuse them wherever we want. Dynamic code, we can write dynamic codes. Dynamic includes, we can write a file and we can include that file in another file. So that is called dynamic include. Then built-in functions, lot of built-in functions are there in PHP that we can directly use and do our job. Not everything we have to do from scratch, like combining two strings, that can be done directly. Breaking a string into arrays, that can be done using built-in functions. Super globals, lot of internal super globals are already provided into PHP that make your PHP development very easy. So here, what is PHP? We have already discussed that PHP is a web development language. That is for web developers. PHP stands for hypertext preprocessor because why it is called hypertext preprocessor? Hypertext is basically used for HTML. So what happens? When we write any statement in PHP, like I have written the statement into PHP, let's move this for now, and when you execute on browser, you got the result. And when you see the source, view page source, you can see that you are able to see this text only. So it is converted to HTML. So Whenever we execute something into PHP, it gets converted to HTML internally. When it comes to the browser, we see the HTML, static HTML. Mitesh, arrays we can define in PHP. 
So if you want to define an array, this is simple string. So array would be dollar $r is equal to array and then you will be giving your values 1, 2, 3, whatever you want to give or even you can give strings if you like like 1, 2, like that so your question is Ajay, your question is if there is an error how you will show it so let me skip this semicolon so every PHP statement ends with the semicolon let me skip this semicolon let's refresh the screen now you simply see the error syntax error unexpected print in line number six so on line number six because why it is saying line number six because semicolon let us know that this particular statement is ended here if if there is no semicolon it will continue and it will see that these two statements cannot be written together. So two statements cannot be written on a single line. There should be semi semicolon separating them. So here it is saying it is expecting that it is continued, but it is not continued actually. So we have to put semicolon to let us know that the statement is ended here. So in PHP it is not very difficult to get the error just change the syntax just provide a wrong syntax and you will find the line name even that where you are having a problem for example if I put a double r a rather than array call to undefined function a double r a on line number four so this is line number four so how much simple it is to get errors in PHP and troubleshoot them the wish uh, PHP language is not compiled so you don't need any compiler or writing main or something else Shruti array can have multiple data types in PHP so you can have like that so this again this is an array array, array can have multiple data types so it is up to you that what value you, you want to provide to an array we can even print an array so in PHP there is a function called print underscore R and your array name yes nail PHP is object oriented so here you can see your array array is having four values with subscripts 0, 1, 2 and 3 and values are 1, 2 and 1, 2 1, 2 and then numeric 1, 2 so what I have done here I have created an array with four variables or different data types so it is possible in PHP there is not an issue and moreover you are able to see this variable get printed so PHP stands for hypertext preprocessor because it is convert once the re uh, response comes from the Apache it is converted to HTML and uh, we can view it on the browser so source would be in HTML only so print underscore R is a function in PHP to basically explain your array it can open up your array and you are able to see it on the browser that's it it is used for testing purpose only you won't be using it for clients or in, uh, means it is not it won't be used over your web portals it would be only for testing purpose if you are getting some issue in your array and you want to print your array on the browser you can simply simply use print underscore r and provide your array name and array would be printed on the browser this is for testing purpose only so when PHP came into the market its name was personal home page later on when it started using into the into the web development professionally it got the name professional home page so it is a server-side programming that can be embedded into, into HTML as well yes Reshma we can use multi-dimensional array with PHP as well there is not an issue any kind of dimension like C C++ okay so your question is how we can comment lines so commenting there is two way commenting in PHP one with 
if you want single line comments, you will simply write double slash and then your comment. If you want to write multi line comments, you will be simply writing slash star and star slash, sorry. And here you can write So these are two type of comments in PHP. Above one is single line comment and below one is multi line comment. So single line is by using double slash or you can simply use hash. Both are okay. Yes, so wicket is similar to C C plus plus. Not an issue. And moreover, we can also use PHP with HTML as well. So here I can write, let me have some HTML code, then how I will show you that how HTML can be used with PHP. So this is my HTML and if I want to use a PHP inside HTML, the simple thing I have to do, I have to write PHP tag. Inside that tag, you will simply write your code. Simply, you will write PHP tag inside that those tags you can simply write your code. So here it is. When you see the source, here you can see that PHP code is converted to HTML. So it is inside HTML. There is not an issue. So Shruti, server side programming means that interacts with the server. Server, like in your body, your mind is your server. Whatever you have to perform, you talk to your mind, right? And your mind returns the response. And that response you do, for example, if I'm speaking something, even that is coming from my mind. I'm trying out, I'm allowing my consciousness to speak something, then that instruction is going to my mind, and mind is interpreting what I want to say, and that particular thing is coming from my mouth. So my mind is my server in my body. The same way you can uh, you can say Apache is a mind of PHP programming. Loop we'll be discussing, don't worry. So let me go through the session. A lot of slides are there. PHP can interact with JS or Angular JS. That is not an issue because that are client side and this is server side. So let's first do with PH and we'll see how it can interact with JS or Angular JS. So here we have seen that how PHP can interact with HTML can be written into HTML or standalone. Both ways PHP can be used. So this is the simple PHP example that we have just seen that inside HTML we can write simple PHP tag and then we can write our code. So and what we get, the result would, we will get in HTML only. Okay. So yeah, Neil, uh, your question is how Eco will work. Eco and PHP, e Eco or print, we can use both in PHP. So it will print the same result, don't worry. So this is the simple PHP example that we have seen practically. So this slide we have also have discussed regarding web server that is Apache, MySQL and PHP that is required to do. So we eco is also a function in PHP that can be used along with uh, or you can say alternative to print. Then PHP variables, we have seen that a variable is any programming language is a name to store a value that can be referenced later as required. So here you can see, if we re, uh, basically go back, 
Shruti, that we'll see later that how we can relate PHP, PHP to MySQL. Please provide me some time and I will let you know. So here I have created a variable for my later use. Aditi, uh, sorry, Adil, yes, uh, where dump or PH printer underscore R can be used alternatively. There is not an issue. So if you can use where underscore dump. See here, but the only thing that you will get extra the type of the variable type of the array element so it is string this is string and this is integer and this is integer that's it but if you simply want to see the array you don't want the data types you can use print underscore r like this so php in php or any programming language a variable is a name that can store multiple uh, that that can store a value that can be referenced later as per our requirement so a variable starts with dollar, like dollar first name, dollar last name. The type of a variable depends upon the value. So we have seen this thing earlier that in PHP, you simply assign the value and get printed. It will be used. You don't have to define any data type. Like I have shown you that my where take a, I has taken a string, then I will be taking it as integer or like this and it will be converted to integer so 20 will get printed there is not an issue equal to operator is used to assign a value to a variable so here you can see variable name equal to 20 so this assignment operator is used to assign values to variable in PHP variable is not required to be declared before assigning a value we don't have to provide, declare a variable like we do in P uh, in C or C++ in order to assign it a value. Data type for a variable is not required to be declared for a variable in PHP that we have seen that we don't have to give any data type whether it would be a string, it would be an array, it would be integer or decimal. Depending upon the value it is automatically interpreted. So this is the power of PHP that it is weakly typed, it is a bit forgiving language. You don't have to worry about data types and all. You simply give the value to your variable and use it. So that was all about some of the PHP variables, PHP basics. Now we will see how we can make decisions, how we can make conditions into PHP. So this was my simple program. Now I will see that how PHP can have conditions. For example, I'm having a number, dollar number is equal to 10. Now I want to see is this number one or odd? How I can check that? So in PHP there is a construct that is called if. So I will simply check if dollar number divided by so we can divide in PHP using slash number slash second number then it would be a division. If dollar number divided by or we can say here to we will use modulus. So modulus is for you might be aware of plus if you have learned mathematics. Yes, Shruti, we can also use switch statements. That is not an issue. We'll be seeing that, don't worry. So by two equal to zero. If modulus of a number is equal to 0, then that number is even. Echo, this number is an even number. So when I, when I refresh my browser, this number is an even number. But if I make it 11, you won't see anything on the system then in that case even if it is not even number we even then we might be willing to display the message so for that we use else if that is not possible then something else else is possible 
So if else block basically would be having conditions. Uh, if condition one is satisfied, it will go to if block. If not, then it will go to else block. Else, we can write this number is n is a odd number. So if we give 11, it will print this number is a odd number. How to concatenate in, okay. Yeah, Ajay, runtime simply means we, I'll be discussing the form that how using forms we can give the dynamic values. Don't worry, we'll be seeing that. Concatenation, yes, we can concatenate two variables in PHP or two strings. Let's see that, how we can do that. Yes, do while we will be looking into have patience, I will show you that how we can use do while condition. So here I'm having str1 test, then str2 string. Now I want to concatenate it. I'll do print dollar str1 dot is used for concatenation in PHP. I will add a space and then I will write str2. So I have written string, printed string 1, then dot concatenated with, with, with the space, then again concatenated with string 2. Now if we refresh test string, so it is concatenated. So dot is used for concatenation in PHP. Okay, you want to print the number with the string, no issues. So like in above method, now this concatenation I will show you that how it will work for the above example. This number, now we can concatenate here. Here we can write dollar number. The same thing we can do below. Like this. So this number, 11 is an odd number. Here we can add a space. So this number, 11, is an odd number. So href is in, uh, used, uh, Prajot, used in HTML. So anchor tag, a tag we can simply use to assign a URL, no issues. Is a odd number, if we make it 12, it will become even number. So number 12 is an even number. So here I have concatenated a string and an integer, a variable. You can concatenate it simply by using dot, whether it's a string or a variable or a number, whatever it is. So this, we have just seen that if, how we can use if, if means inside if, if there would be condition, if that condition is satisfied, code inside that if block will be executed, otherwise code inside else would be executed. We can have multiple conditions as, as well, we can also use like if this is simply sample I'm giving condition one then again else if any some other condition condition two like this then I can have more conditions we can have condition 3, then I will, I can have else. So a condition, if condition can be if, else, if, like that. Yes, nested if is also possible, Devesh, no issues. You can have multiple nested if, else, else, if, same like, PA, uh, same like CC++, there is not an issue. So if we have seen 
if else if so this is if user is equal to mohit print mohit else print you are not mohit if else if if d equal to 5 print 5 team members if else if d equal to 4 print 4 team members so like this we can have l if else if blocks so here it is switch statement as we can use if else if we can also use switch so switch would be containing the variable that for which you want to have conditions so if that day is 3 it will print the golden rings if it is 2 it will print two golden rings otherwise like else you can write it will print one golden ring so we br is break it is break tag if you want to break two lines you will simply give br tag and both line will come on different, different lines so oops concept concept the wish i will show you that how we will use it so this is switch where you can simply provide your variable name on which you want to have conditions cases so if that dollar day is 3 it will print 3 golden rings if it dollar day is 2 it will print 2 golden rings otherwise it will print 1 golden ring so this is the switch statement then we come to loops for loop if we want to repeat something we can go ahead with loops Upender, you can use the single variable for any data type. There is not an issue. Any data type you can, any variable any of any data type you can give in a single variable. There is no restriction. Now, 4 is used for incrementing something. Like I want to print numbers from 1 to 10. So, I'll be doing 4 dollar $i. So, this is called initialization. Then dollar i is less than equal to 10 this is called limit setting up the limit and dollar i plus plus this is called the increment now i want to start from 0 or we can do i, I want to start from 1 because i have to print from 1 to 10 so i i will start from 1 and go and i will go up to dollar i is less than equal to 10 as it becomes equal to 10 we will skip this particular situation we will come out of the loop you can use JavaScript in HTML yes in PHP you can use no worries simply write everything into print or echo that will be used not an issue now I will do print dollar I now I will show the show you the use of break tag that you were using earlier print dollar i here you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 now everything is printed on single line i want to print it on different lines so i will be concatenating a break tag that is a html tag so it will make everything printed on different lines so first one will get printed next it will check if one is less than 10 yes it is one less than 10 and then it will increment one by one that will become to i plus plus in php plus plus is used to increment by one like if dollar a is equal to 10 i do dollar a plus plus so it will be become 11 so a dollar a plus plus equivalent to dollar a is equal to dollar a plus one so both line number 5 and line number 4 are one and the same thing so here I'm incrementing one a number dollar i starting it from 1 going up to 10 and incrementing it by 1 on every increment so print dollar i then I concatenated break tag now you can see the difference everything will get printed on different lines yes Aditya plus plus i is also allowed so it is called pre increment i plus plus is called post increment it is the same concept as in uh, C C or C plus plus so now you can use the usage of break tag all the numbers get print, printed on separate line so dollar i is, I is printed then a break break means gets out of that line and comes to the next line then 
dollar two uh, dollar i is incremented by one and that is printed which becomes two then three then four like that it goes up to it is equal to ten and then it comes out of the loop so this way if we make it fifteen now records will get printed up to fifteen so this is called loop Shruti, uh, session basically depends upon you people. Lot of slides are there. Next, let for first let me complete the session. I will not take uh, more than twenty minutes more, and we can have your questions for each. So there is one more loop in PHP that is called for each loop. Like I'm having an array here, I will show you that how array is used. Array dollar Array we can take array. So two kinds of array are there in PHP. One is called numeric array and one is called associative array. So numeric array is if we take like this or simply yes two, three, four, five like. This. So this is called numeric array. Why it is called numeric numeric array? I will let you know. So I will take one more array. Two. Or we'll take up to three only. So I will be printing both arrays. Print underscore r dollars. Or I will take array one and array two. Array one. And array two. Now you will see that why I'm calling them numeric array, array and associative array. So here you can see the keys are zero, one, two, three, four. But here keys are one, two, three. Strings one, two, three. So wherever you can define your own keys, that is called associative array. That can be a number or that can be a string. Here instead of one, I can write test. Now test would become my string. In order to access that particular array variable, I will write print dollar array two test. Now I will be able to access that particular value that is one. Line two. So this. Is numeric array where keys are numeric, and this is associative array where keys are strings or user defined. So this is called associative array and this is called numeric array. So if we are having associative array, instead of using for, we can use for each. So in PHP there is a loop called for each. We can simply give dollar r two as dollar value and we'll simply do print dollar value so internally it will loop it automatically and print all the values so the same way we'll be doing br so we don't have to provide any start or end or increment nothing we have to provide and we will get printed 1 to 3 because it contains 1 to 3 and moreover if we can also print the keys so we can write dollar key arrow dollar value so this is key and then value or we can write it on the same line key then a dash and dollar value so test one test two test three uh, test one, sorry, uh, this can be made one. So it is one, one, two, two, three, three. So keys and values both are printed now. So for each, your array, then key, arrow, value. So associative array is defined as key, then arrow, then value, then key, arrow value like this and it is printed in the same way for each your array as the key arrow value this is not 
a fixed thing that you will give key value you can give like this only anything you can give this is a user defined variable this is not going to be key value always it can, it is user defined so here is the for loop as we have seen that you will give initial expression initialization then give termination check or condition then you will increment and you will get your value printed and this is for each loop we are having array for months Jan, Feb, March, April, May, June like that and using for each we are doing dollar months as dollar value and printing the value so internally it will it will increment and it will print it so this is for each loop next while statement so the same way we can use while as we do in other programming languages so while inside there would be a condition and till that condition is true the loop will go okay slide number 16 you want to go ahead okay okay what is the question she share So what is your question Ashish uh, regarding slide number 16? We have to be a bit fast because a lot of slides are still pending. So Ashish can I move uh, further slides? Ashish, for loop and for each loop are different. For is used, both are having different is its own syntax. We can't say why because it is up to the PHP interpreter or you can say the designer of PHP who designed PHP. He has provided two different loops, for and for each. So for each mostly we use for associative arrays where you don't need know the keys. You cannot loop over the keys. Aditya, this is the PHP syntax that before every variable will be giving dollar. So this is while statement. So count is one while counter is less than equal to six. So it would be counter equal to one while dollar counter is less than equal to six. I am printing something and counter I am incrementing counter by one. So here I can simply write dollar counter equal to 1 while counter is less than 5 I will take I will do print dollar counter and then be a tag I will be taking and then I will be incrementing dollar counter by 1 counter plus plus so it will print 1, 2, 3, 4 because as the counter becomes greater than 4 because it is less than 5 if I make it less than equal to 5 it will print up to 5 so as it becomes 5 it comes out of the loop this is called while loop and next we have do while loop so the difference between while and do while is that if condition is false in the beginning for example if I make it 5 if I make it 6 so now nothing will get printed because condition is false here the difference between while and do while is that in while if condition is false nothing will get printed but in if condition even if condition is false it will print at least once if we do do or we will do take the same thing print while dollar counter is greater than less than equal to 5 so now I'm taking 
dollar counter as six. Now you can see it is printed once. Do print your counter, then check the condition. So what do is doing? It is first printing the things, then checking the conditions. So so your result will be printed once. Definitely it will be printed once because first it is printing, then checking the condition. On the other hand, while is first checking the condition, then it is printing. So this is difference between while and do while. So now it comes break statement. So break is to control the break in between your condition or inside your loop. So here I'm checking four dollar x is equal to one. I'm looping from one to ten and checking if number is not odd, then break. So here result would be one is odd. So here my number, if number I've taken one, for example. So uh, other there is no basically both are different variations. So like if I'm using for dollar i is equal to zero, dollar i is less than equal to ten, dollar i plus plus. So I'm printing if dollar i percent 2 is equal to 0 then break print dollar i and then break so see First is zero, so let me start from one. Then you will see the difference. Here, see two gets printed and break. It never runs the complete loop. First, it checks if number is even. If yes, it prints that number and gets out of it. Gets out of the loop. It never runs anything else. If I don't print, you will get printed. Let me add b attack. So it is 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. All the even numbers are printed. But if you put break, so after printing 2, it will stop over there. It will break the control and come out of the loop. This is break. And next, it comes continue. Yes, break breaks out of the loop. It breaks the control over there. Continue means skip that particular record and move further. Like if I put continue here, Well, other rather print this outside the loop. So I'm saying that if I encounter a even number, continue, skip that particular number, and go to further number. So it will print one three five seven nine means odd numbers. Yes, continue skips that particular number and moves to the next counter. It skips that particular counter. So it means that when Record 1 comes, it prints it because it never goes into the condition. When 2 comes, it goes into this condition because it is even and it skips that 2 and increments the loop and comes to 3 and then 3 gets printed. So continue means skipping that particular step and continue with next step. So print can have brackets, that is not an issue, both ways we can use it there. Not an issue. So now let us come to PHP forms. So now I will show you that how PHP can have forms. So here I'll be giving input type is equal to text name is equal to I can write 
first name and I'll be taking first name as label then I'll be taking same thing for last name now I'll be taking break tags in between then I will be taking a submit button so now it would be my form first name last name and then a submit button so now this is my form simple form that contains first name and last name and there is a submit button now how I will handle this form so I'll be creating one more save data dot data dot PHP that will be handling this form so each form would be having a method So method can either be get or it can be post. We will be looking into that what get means and what post means. And then it would be having action. Action would be PHP file that would be handling this particular form. So save data would be the file where the control will go once we submit index file. So this is my index file where I'm having a form. Now see, I have taken action as save data and method at post. And when I click on save values, here you can see I went to save data.php because I have given action as save data.php and this save data will be handling my form now. Now I have put values as test, test one and save values. Now it goes to save data, but nothing happens. Now save data is supposed to handle this form. So in PHP, we are having two particular inbuilt arrays that is called post array and get array. Yeah, sorry guys, actually uh, there is an update for you. Uh, right now I'm completing uh, all the slides and if you are having some blocking question you can ask immediately otherwise you can just put your questions over the support and support people will be answering to your questions so let, let me uh, finish up the things practically so that at least you are aware of everything now in PHP there are two arrays called get array and post array that basically handles the form data based on which method you are using if you are using post method get data you will get form data that you have submitted you will get in post post variable otherwise you will get in get variable so how we use that now let's see so pre so pre is a tag to print your array I'll be doing print underscore r dollar underscore post so dollar underscore post is a, an inbuilt PHP array that handles the values submitted from a form using the method post so let's see how it handles what I have done I have created a form with method post and action save data so save data will be handling this stuff once the form will be submitted it will go to save data so here I'm using dollar underscore post so I'm having two input text that is first name and last name so when I will submit my form till now you have seen that I was able to see the blank save data now as I have taken dollar printed dollar underscore post array now 
if you write first name as test or you can see f or anything test test one and click on save values now you can see save data contains your array this array is having three elements one is your first name your last name and your submit button so it contains values of all first name you have given test last name you have given test one and save for save we have values save values that is the text being displayed over the button if we change it save to save data now you submit the form with like Mohit Khurana and click on save values you can see your first name contains Mohit last name contains Khurana and save contains your save values so save data because we have updated value as save data now if you change your method now you can simply see when I submitted my form I came to save data.php simply I didn't have anything else with the URL simply save data.php if you change your method to get and do the same job you fill name and click on save data now you will see blank array why because now you are using get method with form data will now reach in get method dollar underscore get not in dollar underscore post so here you can see first name last name and save now one difference you can see get and post is that in get you will simply redirect it to save data dot php uh, in post but in get all your values all your form data is now appended to the URL with first name equal to first name then m percent then last name equal to last name then m percent and then the third variable so this is the difference between get and post is that if you use get first of all every value of your form will be appended to your URL and second thing you will get the data in dollar underscore get and if you submit the form with post first of all you will get all the values in dollar underscore post and second thing nothing will be appended to URL everything will go in the back end so get is normally used where we want to bookmark our page but post sends the data in backend so you can bookmark a page with post so this is PHP form how we design PHP forms then different methods get and post get is basically advantage and disadvantage of uh, everything in uh, URL is that if you are logging into your email account and you put your email and password and that if that is an email password is displayed in the URL that is very risky and you can get that username password so any secure information if you are going to use you should always use post not get but if you you are working with static sites where you want to bookmark your page simply use get you can use get but uh, most of the time we use post we prefer post so this is get method so post is printed with dollar underscore post yes Aditya there is limit side of get get is basically a string a query string. So it can be up to 2048 characters not beyond that if it is more than that it will be skipped so get is limited but post can handle uh, much more data so post is always preferred so here dollar underscore post is used to post your uh, print your post data and dollar underscore get is for your get data so advantage here is the advantage of get it constructs an actual new and differentiated URL query string user can now bookmark that page now if you bookmark a get page next time you will be able to see the same page but in post you won't be able to the get method is not suitable for logins because username and password are very secure and they will be visible every get submission is recorded in web server log 
So data, it is, it is saved in history, but post form is not saved in history. So post is preferred because it can carry more, uh, more data and this is the format of using post. Advantage is that it is more secure because it sends the data in the background. It can send much larger data. Disadvantage is that first of all a post form cannot be bookmarked. Second, the method can be incomplete with certain files. If there is firewall installed on your system, so it will ask, means it will it will have to pass through that firewall first. Then it will be displayed. If firewall stops some post data, you won't be able to post something. Now, let's come to PHP functions. So till now we have seen how PHP prints, how uh, what are the loops, what are the conditions that we can use with PHP that are similar to C++. Now, we will see what are functions, how we can write functions in PHP. So let me explain function, what function is. A function is a block of, block of statements that you can use repeatedly. For example, I'm printing, I'm having a variable dollar $a is equal to 10, dollar $b is equal to 20. I'm printing print dollar $a plus dollar $b. Now use refresh your screen. Okay, I'm using same data. You can see 30. Now, if I want to reuse this sum, I won't be able to do that. So in order to do that, we create function in PHP. In any programming language, we create functions for usability. Function sum. So I'll be taking $A is equal to 10 dollar b is equal to 30 and i will print dollar a plus dollar b now if you refresh your screen you will get nothing because you have created the function but till now you have not called up the function so function is a kind of bundle that contains multiple items in order to access each item you have to open that bundle the same way in order to access a function you have to call up that function so I call up a function simply by its name and parentheses and there's brackets that's it and now this function will be called and value will be returned now you can see a drawback of this function is that the values are hard coded inside the function so if I, I want to add uh, simply if I don't want to add, uh, sum I want to subtract so I will have to create a new function. So that is a drawback because this is a free information that I'm getting that is always to add. But if I want to do something else with this particular value, I don't want to add them simply. I want to do anything else. I won't, don't want to print it directly like 30, 40. I want to print it with some variable. So in that case, I can return the value from function. Rather than displaying it there only, I can return or what I can do dollar C is equal to dollar A plus dollar B so I'm trying to make PHP simpler for you some of you might be aware of it or more programming you might have done but I'm making it simpler for everybody because some might be newer to newer to programming languages so now instead of adding the only adding the value or we can do yes I will add the values and I will return it now as I'm returning something it should be kept in some variable like if I'm throwing a ball towards you you have to close your hands to catch that ball so the same way if some function is in something returning something you have to catch that in a variable so I'll be taking one more variable dollar sum and I'll sum or it can be any user defined variable and I'm calling up the sum function now I don't want to print like print sum. I want to print like print. This is my sum outside the function. 
and then I will concatenate the sum. Now instead of simple value, you will get printed the complete string. This is the complete string. So now function became bit flexible that now instead of printing the value only, it is giving me the value. Now it is up to my wish. I can do anything with this value. Even I can do dollar $d is equal to 50 and I can do dollar dollar $e is equal to dollar sum that I got from the function and dollar $d. I can do it. I got the value. Now it's up to me what I can do with this value. In the previous example, it was being printed. It was like print dollar $a plus dollar $b. So you were restricted to simply get the value printed. That's it. Now you are it is returning the value. Now it is up to you. You want to print it or you want to do anything else with it. This is up to you. One more flexibility we can add to a function. Now you can note down that this function, the value, it is only doing the sum of 10 and 30 always. But I don't want to make it hard code. I can do, I can pass the arguments to it. Parameters. These are called parameters. So now as I'm passing dollar $a and dollar $b as parameter, when I'm calling up this function, I have to pass the values of these parameters. I'm passing 10 and 20. Here you can see the sum outside the function is 30. If I different values, it got updated. It got updated to 60. So this way, function became a bit more flexible that now you are free to print whatever values you pass. The sum will be accordingly, according to that. It will change accordingly. So this is the fun how PHP functions are created. And you can call up the functions multiple times. There is not an issue. Sum, you can make it sum one, sum two, sum three. So every time it will, it can print different values. You can pass 40, 20, 10, 30, 50, 60. So pr all these three, three will be having different value. Here tag you can append. Sum one. Sum two, sum three. Six, four, sixty, forty, one, ten. So you can call a function multiple times. This is why a function is used for reusability. So two kind of functions are there. One is built-in function and user-defined function. This is user-defined function, and we have also seen. We can also see a lot of functions. I've told you that in inbuilt function are there in PHP that can be used directly. So here is the syntax of function we have seen. We write keyword function, then fun user defined function name, and then set of code, and call that function with name and brackets. That's it. So here are some of the rules. Function names are not case sensitive. So if you are using here sum, you can call sum with capital S. There is not an issue. It is not case sensitive. Function name starts with the letter and an underscore. So function cannot be like one, two, three, sum. It would be either, it would start from alphabet or underscore. And number can follow it like this, but it would not be in the beginning. Function name cannot start with numbers. So return value, we have seen that function can return a value and that value can be used later. So function parameters, we have passed two parameters here, dollar $A and dollar $B, and we are passing their values by calling up the functions and we can simply print the functions. Now let's come to object oriented concepts. Object oriented means uh, you can relate object oriented concept to your real life. Like there is an object called car. There is a class called car. Now there can be different varieties of that car like Honda car, BMW car or any other car. So car is a class, Honda car, BMW car are their objects. So object is nothing, it's the instance of that class. So the same thing we can create in PHP, we can create a class and we can uh, in, in instantiate a class and create the objects of that class. Like in PHP class is basically defined by 
class. I will take a class like uh, we can say car. So inside car, I can have either variable or I can have either function. So I'll be creating a function test. Here I'll be printing. This is my first class function. So here is my class. This is my class. So I can define a class like this. I've created a class car and I'm printing. I'm using a function inside. Now, I cannot call this function like that directly. It will give you an error. Call to undefined function because that function is now part of a class. In order to call that particular function, you have to create the object of the class. So I will be creating object BMW. New, so new keyword is used to create the object of a class. New, then your class name. So this way you can create the object of a class. Now in order to call the function of that particular class, because this BMW is now an instance of class, so it can use the functions of the class. So it will be BMW then arrow and then test. Now it will print the result. This is my first class function. So we define a class. Inside that class we define a function. And we create an object in order to call that particular function. So once the object is created, as many functions are there, like function test, test1 or test2, test3 like that, so all will be called in the same manner. I can write this is my second third this way. So I'll be calling up test test one, test two, test three, like this. So all be appended on the same line so we can add BR tag. first function, second function, third function, fourth class function. So this way we can create functions and call those functions out that particular class. So this is my class name. Then I can also define the variables inside the class. So where variable in classes I can define with where keyword, dollar where, dollar where one or dollar where two. And in order to use the particular variable inside a particular function with where I can write I am going to append that variable now I cannot write directly dollar where one like this I will get an error undefined variable because class variables that we have defined yes we have access spe uh, specifiers right but I'm taking the basic right now so I will be using dollar this and then your variable name now it will print this is my first class function with where and where if I give any value to this it will print the value So variables we can simply use by dollar this. So there are access specifiers, public, private, protected, as with other programming languages. So this is how we can declare a class and create the functions. So this is the syntax of creating object for that particular class. And be creating, I can create multiple objects. So instead of a single, I can create BMW. Honda. So both will be having their own own functions. Now this can call Honda can call the same functions. 
So Honda and BMW both are different instances of the class car. So both will be having their, their own functions and own values. So here is the example or method of calling up a function of a class with object and then function name and then argument that you want to pass. Simply it's the same way you can pass the arguments to a function as we have seen while declaring the function. So now there is a function called constructor. So constructor is a function that is basically used to initialize a class. So in PHP we take constructor functions with underscore underscore construct keyword. Now I will let you know what this construct means. So I'm taking dollar v1 command v2. Now I will show you what, the, what this constructor means. I'll be taking dollar where one dollar this where one is equal to dollar v1 and the same way where to dollar v2. Now if I'm taking constructor with arguments so constructor is a function that initializes a class. Now while calling up the class, creating the objects of the object of that particular class, like I'm creating this BMW, I have to pass the values of both. One comma two I can pass. And I can create a single function sum. print dollars this where one dollar this where two. Now I will call up the function sum. Now you can see three get printed. Why? Because what, what, the, what a constructor function means? Arrow, arrow is simply to point to that particular variable. So constructor is a function that is used to initialize a class variable. So initialization means while creating the object of the class, you have to pass all the values that are being used in, into a constructor. So here I'm using $v1 and $v2 in my constructor. So here it is dollar where one and dollar where two we got the sum of that. So constructor means that is used to initialize the class. I'm passing both the values and getting the sum. If I change the values to five and six, five and six, and I get it printed, it will print eleven. So constructor is a function that is used to initialize a class. So constructor is a special type of function. It is autom automatically invoked as the object is created. Yes, destructor concept is also there in PHP, same as C or C++. Automatically invoked when, when the object is created. So as we created the object and passed the values, these are automatically assigned to var1 and var2. We, we are not calling up the constructor function like, we, are, we don't have to call up the constructor function like this this would be automatically called as we create the object. So as this object is created, this function is automatically called and these values are assigned. If I print something, add values. Like this. So add values is printed. I don't have to call up construct explicitly. It is called internally as I created the object. To define a constructor, PHP provides a special function called underscore underscore construct. We can pass argument to this function as I have passed. Then a function can become a constructor if it is time. So two, two ways are there to define a constructor in PHP. One is using underscore underscore construct. Second, we can take a, create a function with the same name of the class. Now both mean the same thing. 
add values with class name constructor. So here you can see we can create constructor in two ways either underscore construct function or the same function name as of the class. So it will be called automatically as we create the object. So two ways are there to create a constructor. So here are two methods, one underscore underscore construct, then the class name itself. Yes, Aditya, print can have or cannot have brackets. That is not an issue. No, multiple constructors are not allowed. Constructor is basically to initialize a value. So single function is enough to initialize the value. Why to take multiple functions? So two methods are there. One underscore construct and then class name. Now, inheritance concept, this is similar to C, C++, you can create a class and a child class class you can create that will extract your period class. So same way as we have in P and uh, PHP and uh, uh, sorry C and C++, we can have parent class, a child class for example, you might have inherited some of the properties of your parent. So you will be the child and your parent would be the master class, parent class. So a child class would be using the functions of parent class if child class is extending the parent class. So extending extension is done, inheritance is done with this syntax. Parent class you define the as you are defining the classes, this class car and child class you can define like class child car like that and it will extends car. Now child car can call up the functions of car as it is the child of this car class. So function, so let's first see that how it can do. Now I've created a child class that ends car. Now what I will do, I will create the object of child class. So let's remove this. I'm doing the sum and I can take it public. So public means that can be used publicly. So three things are there that we cannot discuss right now. Three access modifiers are there, public, private and protected. So I'm taking public for now because I want to use it in my child class. Now I'm creating object of my child class rather than parent class. Now I will be taking, I will be defining value of variable. So as variables are also part of class, I can give it values outside the class if they are public. Where to? Then by child I am calling C. This is the object of my child class, but I am calling up the functions and variables of my parent class because child class is inheriting my parent. I haven't written anything for child class. So it is printing 20. If I make it 40, it will print 50. So here you can see, I have created a class, child class, that extends parent class, car. And I have created object of child class, not of the parent class. And I am using variables of parent class through object of child class and using calling of the function of parent class. And it is doing, job, doing the job. It is printing up because if a child is created for a parent, child is free to use parent's functions or variables. This is called inheritance. Now we can use function overriding. Overriding means if there is a function in parent class and I create the function with same name in the child class. And if I call the function now, now it will print, Sorry. 
print okay let me check So function override is nothing but overriding the function of the parent class to child class and modify those functions. Overriding we can alter the function. So basically the same function that is in the parent class you can create in the child class and that will now override the parent function. I don't know why it is not overriding here. Let me take the values inside. I think there is some issue, but uh, in this case, this sum, this sum should get printed, not this sum. This value will get printed because this child sum would override the parent class. Yes, Aditya, we can create the object of parent class as well. There is not an issue like this. We can create the parent as well and the call of the parent functions, but parent will not be able to call the child functions. Only child would be able to call up the parent functions. So here you can see, let's see the, see the example. I've created function one and function two and same function two is now created in child class. And now if I create the object of child class and call up two, now two of child class will be called not of the parent class. This function will override the function of parent class. So access modifiers, private, protected and public. So public means that I can use that inside my class or outside my class, anywhere I can use. So here if you see, I have created these two where variables public, I'm able to access it out. If I make it private, and print, why it isn't. Let me check what is the issue, but is not taking it. I think it should not take them while it is taking. I think there's some issue with my system, so I won't be able to show that practically. Private, if I define it private, I won't be able to access it outside as I'm accessing. If it is public only, then I will be able to. If it is protected, even then I won't be able to use it outside the class. I can use it inside my, if I want to use inside my child class dollar this where one I will, will, will be able to if it is protected I will be able to use it inside the class inside the child class but not outside the class if it is protected if it is pr private I will be able to use it inside the class only not outside the class like this so these are called private public and protected access modifiers Yes, it is present. So final keyword simply means that if I put final keyword in front of some class, that class can can now, we cannot inherit that class. Here, if I put final in front of a class, or if I write final in, uh, in front of a function, that function we cannot override. And if I write 
final in front of a class, that class cannot be inherited now. So the class, child class may not inherit from final class that is car. Fatal error means there is some error in PHP, you can say syntax. Your syntax is wrong. Or logic is wrong. You cannot do it logically. That is called fatal error. So if I put final, that particular class can now not be inherited. Yes, PHP doesn't multiple inheritance. It uses interfaces that Java uses. So this is the use of final keyword. So a database, database you can see is a unique application. Yeah, just, just give me a moment please. Uh, inheritance concept is same in PHP uh, as of Java. So now we'll be looking into database. Database is a unique application that stores data basically. So MySQL is a database system that can run on multiple servers. It uses simple PHP uh, SQL queries to execute and it is reliable and can be used for any, any size of application. So using PHP, now we can connect to MySQL server using PHP. So this is my MySQL server. So this is the MySQL server username and password is blank in my case. Now here I've, I'm connected to MySQL server, but now how I can connect to MySQL server using PHP that I will see. That we'll see here. So. So here we'll see that how we can connect to MySQL server using PHP. So for connection, I need three things. One is your host. So in our case, it is local host as I've already explained to you, local host. Then it would be username. So in my case, username would be root and dollar password. That is blank in my case. Now I can connect to MySQL server by MySQL underscore connect function. I'll be passing host, then I'll be passing username, and then I'll be passing password. So now my connection got created. Now how I will check my connection got created or not? I'll be creating this very uh, connection in, you can say, uh, resource kind of, resource variable. Now if I print this, I'll db connect.php resource id3. It simply means that my connection got created. Now I'm connected to my SQL server using PHP. So here I'm connected to my SQL server using a client that is SQL Yog I'm using here, but I can also connect to MySQL server using PHP with a function called MySQL underscore connect. So three things are required. If you even connect from the this interface, you can see three things are there: host, username, and password, which are mandatory in order to log in to your MySQL server. So host in my case is local host, then user is root and password is blank. So I will simply pass all these values to my SQL connect function and I will save it in a variable that is a resource variable and the resource variable when I print this resource variable I can see resource ID. So this simply means that if resource ID is printed it simply means that my connection got created with MySQL and PHP. Now PHP has connected to MySQL server. So we can have two other parameters that is new link client flag. So new link means that every time if I put this value 1 every time it will create a new connection 
if I pass this value as 0, fourth argument, if I pass it as 0, it will see if an existing con connection is there, it will use that connection. If I pass it 1, every time it will create a new connection with MySQL. This is the difference. And client flag means if it is a secure connection, it would be 1. If non-secure, then 0. Mean HTTP, it would it can pass be z uh, passed as 0. If HTTPS, it will be passed as 1. Now we have created the connection the same way once we have done with our connection we will be closing up the connection mysql underscore close and we will be passing up the resource type for which we created the connection now this will close the mysql connection so the syntax is mysql underscore close and your source link identifier means this resource that you created that was the reference that was the pointer for the connection use that pointer use that reference to close the connection in order to run a query in PHP I have connected now in order to run a query like I want to select something so first of all I will have to select a database like if I'm going to use MySQL I have to select a database. Here I have selected the Azure underscore demo. So it is bold here. You can see Azure underscore demo is selected. Now if I do, if I take a table like student details, if I do select star from or select star from student details. Here is the list. You got all the records into student details. Now the same thing you can do with PHP. So in order to do it, I will be first selecting the database. That which database I want to use. The function name is mysql underscore select underscore db that I will be using. To select a database, then I will be giving Azureka underscore demo. Otherwise, this MySQL server will not get to know that which database to use. There can be multiple databases on a MySQL server. I will be giving MySQL underscore select underscore db function and then value the database name that I want to use. Then I will be writing my query. select star from student details now I'll be using dollar data or I will say object data obj data is equal to I'll be using a function called my underscore query and I'll be passing my query to this function with the resource identifier that I created. So it will let me know that for which resource, which MySQL connection I'm running this query. So MySQL underscore query, then query, and then resource data type. Now, if you print this, you will see resource ID again because this is returning a resource but like it is returning a packet now we have to unpack it to get the values so in PHP there is a function we use the while loop to fetch all the records from the table we do dollar row because I will be fetching each and every row so there is a function in PHP called mysql underscore fetch underscore array and I'll be passing my object resource to that and I'll be printing I'll print each and every row now I will do print underscore r dollar row now you can see I got values of my data from the database 
I mean, I'm having these two, these much of records, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven records. Got one, two, three, four, and then five, and then six, and then seven records. Now you can see I got both the subscript, zero and then roll number, one and name, two and email. So both are have duplicated, one with the numeric key and one with the associative key. So data would be returned in this way if we are using MySQL fetch array. So in order to restrict it to either numeric value or associative value, we have to pass a second argument to this function. That is MySQL underscore, if I want to only associative array, I will be passing MySQL underscore asoc. So this will give me only associated, so this roll number, name, email are the column names in the database. You can see roll underscore number, name, email and contact underscore number. So these are the column names. Now if I want only the numeric keys, note the associative keys. So I will be passing my school underscore num instead of my school underscore, underscore asoc. So I will be getting instead of key names, I will be getting numbers for the keys 0, 1, 2, 3. Subscripts for it. If I want both, so I can either remove or I can pass one more argument that is called my school underscore both. Now it will return me both numeric keys and associative keys. If I remove it, it will do the same, same job. So this is how MySQL query is used to fetch any query and MySQL fetch underscore array is used to fetch the data. So if I want to fetch only associative array, so two ways are there, one to pass MySQL underscore asoc and another way is there is one more function that is called MySQL underscore fetch underscore asoc. Now it will do the same job, job as passing the second argument as MySQL underscore SO. So it will return all the records in associative arrays from the database. So two function fetch underscore array and MySQL underscore fetch underscore SO. So these two can be used to fetch data from the database. So that's all about today's session. Any query, any question you can ask or you can later on contact with support and they will reply to you. So this was how, I think now your question of how PHP interacts with MySQL is clear. Because you have seen that how I can run. Here I am running select query using query and fetching all the data and printing it on the screen using print underscore R PHP method. I got the array of the data. Okay. Adil, your question, MySQL underscore MySQL underscore underscore I under versus PDO. So PDO again can be used with PHP. That is not an issue. MySQL I is upgraded version of MySQL. It is, it is, you can say, a bit more flexible than MySQL and moreover it is object oriented. PHP my admin C here I'm using SQL yog. You can use PHP my admin as well. Let me show you what PHP admin, my admin means. It is nothing but it is a MySQL client. When you install XAMPP, write localhost, you will get here PHP my admin. Dhruv, if you are going to develop a secure site, like if you are going to work on some secure banking information or kind of financial information or kind of shopping cart, then you should go with the HTTPS and you can purchase the HTTP certificate then. So here, the same thing you can see, I can access my database. That is Azure underscore demo, Azure underscore import. Same way I can access in this SQL yog. So it is nothing but a client to access your database. So using SQL, you can write your query. You can import, export your data. You can search your data. A lot of things you can do using PHP my admin. So uh, the thing is that once you have created your site like on your local system,
using this like this I have coded you can simply upload your code to the server right now we are not going to uh, cover more MySQL but but yes if you are going to do the complete uh, PHP course from Azureka you will be getting MySQL in more details PHP and MySQL in more details Oracle Workbench is different, Ashish. MySQL, there is one more called MySQL Workbench that is similar to Oracle Workbench, but that works with MySQL. You can use that MySQL Workbench. PHP doesn't build the mobile apps; it acts as a backend for mobile apps. Yes, Raj, there is a lot of career scope in PHP. Because PHP is the best, best web programming language these days, and it is now extending day by day. More and more modules are being added to PHP. More and more frameworks are built in PHP. That is more secure and fast. I have spent 11 years in PHP and still working in PHP. So there is, there are very good chances of employment in PHP this is not an issue because you not only learn PHP when you work as a PHP developer you lo lo learn a lot of things including PHP you learn PHP you learn HTML you learn JavaScript jQuery lot of things definitely so it will help you to build web programming career definitely it will do See, PHP, PHP uh, alone is not used. PHP, MySQL are basically used together, but you can also learn JavaScript, jQuery, JSON, etc., Ajax, etc., if you want to build a career in PHP. Okay, okay then, uh, if this is enough, then we can just leave for now. And if you have some other, any other question, you can just put to support. Yes, uh, you can uh, upload videos and you can download whatever you want to do. Everything you can do, it, upload, download, anything you can do with PHP. Yeah, thank, thanks, Ovik. Thanks a lot. Actually, I, I had a lot of things to explain, but uh, due to time shortage, I, would, I was not able to explain everything. So it is very vast subject. You cannot uh, complete it in three, three hours. It, it might take three months, even if you discuss on it. But as limit of the time, I won't be able to explain much. Uh, Raja, I think you should contact Azureka. They will let you know how to reach me. Yes, I'm saving this video. I'm recording this video. You can ask Azureka to provide you this video. No issues. Okay. Thanks, folks. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah, bye. Take care. Yes, Mitesh, MySQL is the best choice. You can work with the Oracle, but MySQL is the best choice because it provides functions. You have seen MySQL query, fetch so, but it never provides functions like that for Oracle. Yes, you can build a good website with PHP. Okay then, okay everybody, thanks, thanks a lot. Okay, I'm going to end this session. If anything else, let me know. Otherwise, I will end this session. Yeah, thanks, thanks Mitesh. 
Thanks, Jyoti. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Bye. Take care. I think Raj, you should get in contact with uh, Ajureka. Thank you, Adil. Same to you. Raj, you should contact Ajureka. They will let you know about the next session. Okay. Okay, thanks everybody. I'm ending this webinar. Thanks for your time. Can PHP record are doing in a website? What do you mean, Aditya? I'm not getting your question. Actually, PHP provides uh, every kind of functionality. A lot of modules are there in PHP. Yes, we, okay, uh, videos you want to download from Azureka, uh, from Azureka or uh, from the Google? The, if you want to download this video, you can talk to Azureka and they, they will provide you, yes, they will provide you how to download this video, provide you the information. Talk to the, they will help you out, definitely they will help you out. Uh, Mitesh, you contact Azureka, they will let me know if there is something. You can you can talk to me uh, through Azureka only, so talk to them and refer that you want to talk to me and they will they will facilitate this thing and you will be able to talk, to talk to me. So Aditya, the videos, basically the video that we are discussing right now, this presentation, you can download it later. And if you miss something, you can see it later. This is the only video that you'll be get. Yes, we can log, we can track everything, Aditya. No issues. Yes, PHP can track them. No issues. So let's first, uh, means, let's discuss this thing with Azure Eka support and they will provide you, they will facilitate you everything. Okay then, should we end this, webin uh, this webinar? Should we exit or still any query? Okay then, I think it was enough for now. So I'm just leaving up the session. Thanks, thanks guys, thanks a lot.